close caption. All right, let's start with a prayer. Placing my hands on my heart, taking that deep cleansing breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this time to come together to be the two or more gathered in the name and the nature of love. Grateful for our willingness to uh, declare that we are living the teachings of Jesus through A Course in Miracles, living a life of love. And we're interested in um, knowing the truth of our being, remember, remembering the innocence and perfection that is our original nature. We are grateful to allow to fall away any and all blocks to love, grateful for our mighty companions that walk with us and talk with us all through the day, all of our earthly and heavenly helpers. And we ask that they join us now, surrounding and supporting us, supporting our conversation, supporting everyone here, all who may listen later supporting the technology that we get to use to come together each week. And we're grateful for the blessings that we receive and the blessings that we are. And we share those blessings and the love that we are with everyone because we are one. In grace and gratitude, we let it be. And so it is. Amen. So we are... Uh, still in the um, Course in Miracles, the Song of Prayer. We are in <clears throat> um, chapter one, section five, the latter end. And I'm going to start us off with the third paragraph. Um, had it highlighted once before and it still spoke to me very strongly. So now prayer is lifted from the world of things, of bodies and of gods of every kind. And you can rest in holiness at last. Humility has come to teach you how to understand your glory as God's son and recognize the arrogance of sin. A dream has veiled the face of Christ from you. Now can you look upon his sinlessness? High has the ladder risen. You have come almost to heaven. There is little more to learn before the journey is complete. Now can you say to everyone who comes to join in prayer with you, I cannot go without you, for you are a part of me. And um, when I read this, I was really thinking about um, all that has been coming up around um, my husband's health challenges and um, knowing that we will be driving to Pittsburgh again next week. Um, you know, it, what it brings up for me is just recalling the challenges that we had the last time we were there, last times we were there and the the 20 page forgiveness letter that took me a week and a half to write um, at that time, because there was so much that happened. And so what I'm, what I am realizing as I am um, praying around this and meditating around this and uh, doing the work in the change your mind about your body class um, and especially with Karen Jay's classes that uh, she just did these past two Saturdays, is that there is definitely residual attachment to resentment. Um, you know, against the hospital, the doctors, the nurses, you know, the whole staff there, the pharmaceutical companies, the insurance companies, like there's a whole, like, spider web full of tentacles of like residual resentment around that. And what I'm realizing is that I can't hold that resentment because it's resentment against myself because there's only one. So um, 
what I'm willing to do is the work around any forgiveness that I need to forgive myself for uh, around that whole situation. And what I'm knowing is as I am doing that work and releasing any stickiness from the past that I can see peace instead of this. I can have a, a different experience this time around. Um, and so that's, you know, I cannot go without you. I cannot go without, you know, everybody in that hospital that we came across the last time for you are a part of me because we're one. So that's where I'm starting us off. <laughs> go ahead, Grace. Thanks, Linda. Um, I was really inspired by your forgiveness work over the wedding and the, the baby shower story. I don't know if everybody knows that, but that went back a long way. And, um, and we have to do it. It's only for the brave. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I, you know, and I, it's hard for me to understand the concept of we're all one, because I'm looking at the screen now, how can we all be one, but um, I'm slowly understanding through a different method, not through my eyes, but seeing the love process in action and the forgiveness process in action, I am seeing that, yeah, however I treat you, I treat me. And um, I've been staying with my daughter now for two weeks and she and her husband have been having some personal problems and it's been a little bit tough, but I've had to tell myself, um, well, you can get sucked into it and feel bad or you can just remember, apply what we've been reading all the time, but applying it, which is that, um, Everything is a projection of the guilt that I'm feeling inside. So how is my daughter's marital problem caused by me? Oh, but it is. I don't know how, but it is. And I have been doing um, ho pono pono for the last two weeks around everything to do with her relationship, her in-laws. Her sister-in-law came over last week and it was quite unpleasant. And I could either buy into that or I could do a forgiveness. And I have to say, my first reaction was um, judgment because it was pretty brutal. And then given a bit of time, I realized, okay, you know, I asked for that, I created it and I started doing a pono pono for her. And well, if nothing else, I felt better. And my daughter seems to have had a shift as well. And she's usually, not that appreciative. She doesn't show that much appreciation, but she's, she can be very critical of her mom. And I have scrubbed this house from top to bottom while I've been here. <laughs> and uh, she's not the best at keeping the house clean. And, um, and she actually came and told me, I didn't ask her at all. This has been going on for a couple of months. She came and sat on the bed one night and said, mommy, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you're always here for me. And I was floored because it's quite out of character for my little princess. And um, she said, you, whenever I need you, you always come and you're so much fun and you've really raised my spirits. And I thought, yes, joy, if I can stay in joy, it affects the whole world around me. And so Linda was really inspired by what you did about the baby shower and um, your daughter-in-law's parents or mom. Thanks a lot for doing that work. It motivated me quite a lot. Oh, I'm so glad, Grace. Yeah, it was a huge shift for me, uh, you know, between doing the, the work around the the dance and the shower yeah. and 
um, you know, my guilt around not having done a, a bridal shower or bachelorette party for my sister that I, that I didn't even realize was there until I was making this other stuff. And then the, um, you know, tying in the, the stuff about my parents' wedding and how they were so miserable at their wedding. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really, it's amazing how like time and space, completely relative, it healed it all because- <laughs> I love it. Last, because last Saturday, that wedding was spectacular. Everything was beautiful. Everything was joyful. Um, Savannah had one tiny little bridezilla moment, but I, I mean, with all that she planned and all that went into that, I mean, yeah, it was perfect. Everything was perfect. It was delightful. We had a wonderful. Um, yeah, it's just miraculous when we do that work and we take our courage in both hands and take that responsibility. Um, I have my ex-husband popping around here to see my daughter and, you know, I've been doing quite a lot of work on that. But I was telling my daughter how painful it was for me to see her and her husband going through this because I had to watch the whole thing. Yes. And seeing my son-in-law crying. Oh, yeah. God, I can't. <laughs> Anyway, um, and I said to her, I experienced so much pain myself. I said, and then she poo poos anything spiritual, of course, and um, not of course, but she does. And I said to her that I had to do a couple of days of healing around my own divorce. And then he came around one afternoon and I made him and all of us some mojitos. <laughs> And, and he actually started actually asking me questions instead of just talking about himself. And afterwards, my daughter said, Mommy, do you think that the healing that you did around your divorce helped you get on better with daddy the other day? See, who would have thunk? Yeah. <laughs> yep. That she would even notice that or even tie them together when she usually poo-poos. Yeah, healing and spirit. Anyway, thanks, Linda. I'm gonna yes. pass to somebody else to Beautiful. Nancy Gale. Yeah, thank you, Grace. Yes, Nancy Gale, and then Kathleen. Well, I'm in the negative today. I'm sorry, but the uh, Thursday night last week, um, six o'clock. The uh, huge tree part of the, I don't know what kind of tree, but it's been, apparently been dead for years. It's over in the next yard and it's, it's like a hundred feet tall. And it's like, we had this like microburst of wind and stuff. The middle section of the whole tree just landed on the corner, tore out the, like, the AC, uh, apparently put a hole in the roof, which, we can't see the roof from the room um anyway and um so this is the third time um the first time happened before i was came here over on the little house that's next door put a hole in their roof that's before i moved here so and then this week is two years since i've been amy moved me here about few few months after i moved here two years ago um part of that tree fell on the same corner um, but it did no damage. Well, anyways, so um, called the landlord immediately. Um, send his brother over. He was out of town, apparently. His brother came over, uh, checked everything out, and then uh, and so I'll, there was a hole in the roof. So and it's we have all this rain and stuff. So he went and got something to patch it. Um, so you know, water wouldn't come in. But anyway. Um, and then the insurance guy didn't, their insurance, his insurance guy came yesterday afternoon. And I had, so, and the previous time that it happened here, the, the landlord, um, he just came over immediately and just they threw all these stuff over in, in the, um, the next yard and that's it. Just really quick, clear it all out. So like it never happened. And um, it's like, and I'm remembering that. And it's like, he never, also anyways. So the, the insurance guy, and I 
said, um, it's like his, so he, so anyways, um, and Amy and Paul had just put that in the, it's an old, it was an old AC they put in the kitchen uh, two weeks ago. And it just tore it out of the window. It's one of the bigger ones and pulled it out of the socket um, anyway. And um, so anyways, okay, to make sure to um, I do not have a lease because this is, there's no lease. And, um, and uh, different things, uh, and, and um, I remember I got the story about the people next door, the hall went in their living room, right in the living room. They had to move out into a motel for like a month until they fixed it. And it's not, and it really wasn't, he fixes things. He does it, but he doesn't know how to do all this stuff. But he says, oh, well, I'll cut the tree down. It's like, I have all the equipment to cut down. The tree belongs, on the in the neighbor's yard, um, and all the, I got all the stories from everybody, and it's like the landlord said the last time he said the guy um, he's not going to take the tree down. He never did. He, he said the landlord said to me that he offered to pay him to pay for it, but I and then he said there's nothing we can do. They told us we can't we can't go on this property because it's his property. I said who told you that? He said the insurance guy. Oh, so we just have to wait. Well, anyways, so I'm remembering all of this right in my experiences so far. And so, um, and when he came, when they both came, he called, he tested me, and said they'll be here at three o'clock. So I said he never came to the door. Never told me they were there. He just, they just went around and I, you know, I can see. And I, so I said, so I thought, hmm, interesting. So luckily, so I went out on the, on the ramp back there where it's, where it's right there on the thing. And um, I listened and that's the, the insurance guy. And then I started asking questions. I listened. And so the landlord, he said, well, I said, well, how long has that tree been dead? It was a long, long time. It's huge. Um, and what met my brain. So, and then I asked the landlord, I said, it, it's a whole row of uh, evergreens. It's like the, the boundary between our little three houses here and the next yard. I don't know how long they've been. I, so I asked him, I said, well, who owns those trees? Who they bought? He said, I don't know. He said, but that's the property lane. I said, you, you don't know. Okay. Okay. I didn't say anything. I'm just taking in information. And, um, Nancy Gale, what is this relating to our reading or a healing uh, opportunity? It's like, yeah, it's like, we're supposed to take, uh, we're all related. And it's like, I am totally freaked out and angry. So angry at all of this. And then, then I remembered Carla's thing last week. It's like the last thing on the list was what if, Everything is not as it seems. And it's like, I'm onto to trust. And all of a sudden this morning I'm saying trust. It's like trust in God, yes. Trust in people, no. But we're all one. I don't trust any of these freaking. So I'm so I'm listening and he's the, so the, the, the insurance guy's asking and he said, I've got two weeks to, I said, no, three. He said, well, what do you mean three? I said, this is the second time here and the other one there. That's three. And I was like, the landlord doesn't, it's like, so now I'm not saying, okay, fine. There's no contract. I have no rights because I don't have a lease, no written lease. And then, and it's like, so what do I do? I have to, so Amy and I were saying, this is really nice and perfect here. It's like, oh, what's that? Too good to be true thing. So I'm going to have to move out because if I start complaining, it's like, but that's, you know, okay. So anyways, the, the insurance guy said, if they don't do anything, he told us exactly what to do. And I wrote it down because I'm not sure the landlord's going to do it. Do I have the right to do this? He said, if this, they don't do anything and there's any pro for future property damage or life in property, people injuries, the town and the landlord, whoever owns that building, that house, they'll be responsible. Also, I have to sit here and wait till I, they kill me and then... You can see my, my, my so, no, yeah. no, no, you know where I was last week. 
Would so, you feel like tell me some, could... tell me what to do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like you could um log in to your Jennifer Hadley account and do one of the forgiveness letter workshops around this? You want me to do another um, one? You don't have to know exactly what the forgiveness letter is going to be about. Just start, just start, just start saying what you would like to release. Obviously you would like to release your, um, your distrust, <laughs> your anger, your frustration, um, the story, you know, all of the, all of the things that are taking you out of your peace, those are the things that you would like to forgive and start there. And then just let the letter take you through. And I promise you, because this is what is working for me, you will have a shift. Yeah, because like, look at the la last week. It was like, yes. it's like with Amy going off to the, the down to hike in the yes. park. So, I know. It's like, oh, I just want to be so angry. <laughs> you're, you're allowed to be angry for as long as you want to. But for as long yeah, as right. you want to be angry, you're going to be sitting in that dirty diaper, as Jennifer calls it. Oh, well, hush. How long do you want to sit in that dirty diaper? <laughs> Well, that's an obvious answer. Right? <laughs> the Amy told me last week. I said, I don't understand. It's like, she says, mom, I want you to grow backwards. I said, what? She said, I want you to grow backwards. Like, you know, now that I'm, this is, I don't know if this is even healed because we did the CT, right? So I'm, I'm waiting on that. And it's like, she, I said, what do you want me to do? She's because, so you can do it, I'll do the things for yourself. I don't have to do all this anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, again, just all of it can be dumped into a forgiveness letter and you don't have to know what the healing is going to look like. You don't have to know what is going to show up for you. All you have to do is take everything that's in your head and put it on that paper and say, I can't deal with this, Papa. It's yours because right now it looks like a shit show to me. Thank you. And yeah. I was thinking of Kathleen. It's like, yeah. and, and all of us, it's like, it's like we're being hit, being, being, we're, all of us different ones. It's like, we are so close to the truth. And it's like, yes. so, and all of a sudden it's like, eh, right. Jennifer and all everybody. Yeah. And don't give so, up before the answered prayer. Jennifer says it all the time. You got this. Okay. Girl. So that's, I'm going to envision we're, we all have our hands connected and we're all saying, eh. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I'm so grateful, like Kathleen, for sharing because at least I have somebody to relate to. And so share, the, you know, everybody share the good stuff too. Don't yes. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Nancy Gill. You can't be 100% good? Yes, you can. No, I mean, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, consistently never go back to a negative. Well, if you, as soon as you catch it, you're like, oh, I just decided to put that dirty diaper back on. I don't need that. Oh, that image is going to drive me nuts. <laughs> you got this, girl. I know you do. Okay. All right. That was sort of a facetious remark I made. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Kathleen. I sort of feel like sucking my thumb here. You know, I, <laughs> um, sorry you're going through all that, Nancy Gale, that's intense when one, thing's hap one thing happens after another or seems to happen after another. I don't know where to start. I did a forgiveness letter on my the smelly house and I've had three days with no smell, even though it was really hot yesterday. And, um, Jonathan, the young man that did a lot of the work, um, haven't heard from him, but he's still, I'm still affirming that he and his wife and son 
find a place to live because last I heard they were still homeless. I mean, there's situations in the world that are impossible. I went to see Sounds of Freedom yesterday. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but OMG, 1.2 million children have been trafficked for, as sex slaves. And um, the movie took about five years to come out. It's been suppressed, I guess. Anyway, um, it's a great story. It's a true story of a man that goes looking for two children. And um, the little girl in the movie should get an Oscar for her performance. Uh, the children in that movie, I don't know how they did what they did just to make that movie, but it's stunningly impactful. And um, I didn't cry during the movie, which kind of surprises me. And at the end, there's this beautiful message by the main actor, that man, Jim, I can't remember his last name. Really good message at the end. Um, you can scan the thing on the movie screen and buy free tickets so other people can go to the movies for free. I guess it's on Disney Plus now. It's turning into the biggest movie of the summer, which is a huge surprise to everyone. And there's an organization called One Underground, I think, that is going to look for kids apparently and help them do rehab. So I'm watching this movie and I'm like going, what Kieran Jay said, beside every problem stands a miracle. Beside, you know, beside every problem stands a miracle. Beside every problem stands a miracle. Because this seems like an overwhelmingly enormous problem. And right here in Clearwater, it's supposed to be a hotbed of sex trafficking. And, um, so I'm like, there's no order of difficulty in miracles. This is all in my mind. I'm creating this entire situation and the world. And I know that Jesus wants us to go out and help people. Jesus wants us to go out and help animals. We are responsible for the whole world. I don't know what I can do about this situation, except to <clears throat> turn my own mind over to God and keep healing my own mind. And to know that these children are figures in a dream. And they're going through a very real experience. There's anything I can do to help them, but I can't go into misery myself. Like apparently there's a lot of, oh, it's the left and the right trying to suppress the movie. I don't want to know anything about that. I don't want to know anything. Like the lesson today was about, was it today? How the ego wants to keep digging in and digging in and digging in and trying to find out more and more and more about everything. No, I just have to give this to God and um my own mind and know that there's a miracle standing next to everything do my forgiveness letters i'll probably do it on the whole sex trafficking thing because it is horrifying on the level of form i mean it's horrifying it's the biggest money maker in the world right now sex trafficking children and um so I think it's bringing to consciousness, this is what he says at the end of the movie, it's, it's like during the underground slavery movement or whatever that brought that whole slavery co concept to consciousness. This is coming to our consciousness right now that sex trafficking is happening all over the world, especially in the United States. And um, so I just, ah, you know, I want people to talk about it and write about it because it's so disturbing and yet it's nothing different than what we're going through with smells and but how can it not be different than that you know so it's 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 uh overwhelming and um i hope there's a lot of podcasts that come out about it anyone anyone that's of course a miracles teacher around the world i hope they all come out and talk about it how we're supposed to respond, you know, how we're supposed to deal with this. And um, and then anyway, anyway, back to the lesson, I kind of wanted to unpack like how we pray. It's like pray, prayer is a way to true humility. That's the first line. And then down in number one, four, humility brings peace because it, it doesn't claim that you must rule the universe or judge all things as you would have them be like the sex crisis. All little gods that gladly lays aside, not in resentment, but in honesty and recognition that they don't serve. So it doesn't serve me to, to think too much about this situation because I will just get sunk. In fact, I woke up this morning, I went to the movies yesterday on a date. I mean, this is our first date. And then we went out to eat. And then I came home and talked to my sister on text. 
he's the one that told me about the organization. And then I just turned it over and, and just kept thinking about, you know, miracles standing next to problems. And um, actually woke up feeling really happy and good. And then I listened to Ted's, Ted's Sun, Sundays with Spirit. Listen to that again. And I don't know if you guys heard Ted speak, but he's just like, you can find a place between peace and happiness. You gotta find your place between heat, peace and happiness. For me, is partly playing my music. He's so calming. It's just a wonderful talk to listen to. It's, he doesn't seem to have a piece of paper he's referring to or anything. He's just speaking from his heart. Um, and then, um, yeah, Kieran Jay's talk, you know, it doesn't knock us all sideways. Yeah. I do not want to have to become paralyzed to learn these lessons. You know, that's what it first arises, I think, in myself and a lot of other people. It's like, no, I can have a bad smell. I can learn from a bad smell. I don't have to become paralyzed. Ah! <laughs> so I've already had cancer. I mean, I've already done a whole bunch of interesting things with my body and I just don't want to do any of that anymore. I don't want to be that interested, but I don't want to you know, not look at what Kathleen's doing either. So anyway, thanks for letting me that movie. Yeah, thank you, Kathleen. Yeah, I, I it really, you know, when things like that happen, just reminding ourselves that there's no degree of difficulty in miracles. I mean, we can look at that and go, that's horrific. We can look at somebody dying and agonizing death from cancer and say, that's horrific. We can look at the war in Ukraine and say, that's horrific. But again, like you were saying, it's no different than the smell that you're dealing with in your house. It's no different than Nancy Gale's tree. It's no different than um, having to deal with more health issues with Rudy's transplanted kidney. It's no, there's no degree of difficulty. Hangnail, it's the same damn thing. And it's just, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing to have to take that sense of responsibility to that degree. But we're doing it. We are doing it. That's why we're here every week. So thank you for that. When? Well, I can really resonate with what Kathleen was saying. You know, I actually just got back from vacation for a week with my brothers in North Carolina. It was so utterly peaceful and relaxing and, you know, like just what the doctor would order. And for me, one of something that came up, there was some family issue, you know, things between, you know, my brother and, and his new partner and my other brother. And I was trying to offer a perspective, create harmony. So I think, you know, I might have put a positive spin on some of it. And then there was a program that was on the television. It was had some disturbing images for me. I'm like, I, like I'm aware my consciousness is really sensitive. When I I don't even have cable, but if I'm turning, you know, a channel or whatever, and there's, you know, some shooting and some violence, I, I'm aware that my, I'm so, you know, wanting to step away from all of that. So I'm feeling in this great calm place, of course, that after vacations, we always have to come home and get back to, you know, our usual things we're handling, but I'm, I'm, you know, the whole thing with the child trafficking, I, you know, um, I've heard a lot about that, you know, and I'm aware of that. And as well as, you know, I have some family very much into other, well, let's just say conspiracy theories of sorts. Now, I don't question whether they exist or not, but I have to go back because if I think about this child trafficking and you know, the war in the Ukraine, I mean, to me, those seem way bigger than my knees that hurt or, you know, whatever. They just seem like insurmountable. And I, honest to God, I cannot focus on some of those negative things or I don't know if I could function. I would feel just so overwhelmed by 
this horrible thing that has no part of me that I would never want to contribute to or whatever, but nonetheless, here we are. And so, you know, we're all human and we have to deal with our own little situations. And then we're aware of all these bigger issues that exist in our world. And it's like, I just keep going back to, and I have the only way, is any of these things coming from fear or from love? Well, a lot of it is not from love. And what, you know, it's like you feel almost um, like you have nothing you can really do to affect these situations. But I always come back to every little thing I can do to help be positive, to handle my own issues is making space in a bigger way for others and other situations. But I, I can really relate. I, I This is very difficult stuff that exists. And the knowing of it is just so like, it just hits me so deeply. And I'm like, okay, what can I do? So it's back to the Honopono. I want to come from a place of love in everything I think and say and do. Um, so uh, that's why it's an ongoing process. But, you know, I can really relate um, to what everyone is saying and, and the challenges we're all facing. And I, I love this reading, um, but it's like I have to read it, you know, and, and let it sink in and integrate into my mind and really kind of get that. But thanks for everyone sharing today. Yeah, thanks so much, Gwen. Kathleen. I just yeah, want yeah. to say that um, I know that the men, predominantly men who are doing these things need to be forgiven and they're not, their minds need to be healed. Um, that is exactly the same process as me healing my own mind. So if we can send that out to these predominantly men, I mean, some women are gathering the children, but predominantly whatever, human beings, they're, they need to be forgiven. Um, so that means we can't make it real. And that me means their minds need to be healed the same way my mind needs to be healed. So, and I think all the controversies coming up about whether it's a real movie and all that crap, I think it's because people can't bear the agony of knowing right. what's going on. And so they're distracting themselves with arguing about blah, blah, blah. Um, but anyway, thanks Gwen for sharing that. I appreciate it. Um, and I know that we can, we can heal this. That's why Gary Renard wrote The Disappearance of the Universe. If enough of us heal our minds, this is just not going to be here anymore. Yeah. And so, you know, the more that we can love, 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 like you said, just stay with the love and peace of God, right, Robin? Peaceful, peaceful, peaceful days. Um, that, that's about as, as good as we can do. Love. Yeah. And that's powerful. That's super powerful. Yeah. Thanks, Kathleen. Leslie. It took me a minute to unmute myself. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for your shares. I, uh, yeah, I'm with you, Gwen and Kathleen both. I'm like, I mean, I feel like I live in a closet because I really have no idea what you're talking about. I've never heard of this movie and I actually don't want to watch that movie. I think it would really, I, I just, I, I it, it sounds very disturbing. <laughs> and I do, my husband says I live in a closet and sometimes I'm really happy about that. And at the same time, I absolutely know that forgiveness is the answer. And, and I just, I think it was what you were saying, Kathleen, is like, I just, I can just like with Malawi, I can just feel so overwhelmed sometimes that I'm making these baby packs and it's helping like a thumble fill of, even if I sent 1500 of them, it's still only, it's, that's like nothing compared to a million people, but I just have to remember what, what is it that, what is it for me to do? And I, I, I just love, and I think it was, I don't know who it was. I think it was um, Gandhi that said, you know, there's going to be peace and war, but, but we can't always clean up that we can't, maybe I can't do anything about the war in the Ukraine, but where is it in my life that I have war? Can I just clean up my own war in my household? Can I just clean up the, the, 
the war in my head, in my thoughts. Can I just, I mean, perfect example yesterday, something happened at work and it was this attorney that I had an interaction with from Kentucky from like four years ago. And it was nothing. I mean, of course I took it personally. Basically I felt very disrespected because he just wants to talk to the attorney and not to me. And I just got all haughty about it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm holding a grudge for this man for four years ago. He probably doesn't even remember. Can I just do what Cindy Renard suggests and remember what true forgiveness is, is that this never even happened. He never slighted me, not in the real world. He only slighted me in my imagination in this dream and it's it's be like me having a sleeping dream of him doing this to me and still being mad about it the next morning it's insane and yet I want peace in the world and from four years ago I lost my peace over something so insignificant it just it's so true what Jesus says we just have to be so vigilant of forgiveness with ourselves and with our minds so yeah, there's a lot of forgiveness that needs to be. I mean, I, I can't even really wrap my head around child trafficking. I mean, I'm just like, that's just in books. I mean, I'm, I like don't like to think that it's real. It's like, that's not real. Who would do that? You know, and and if it is true, apparently in the dream, then you're right. The, the people that want to do that stuff with, I mean, all of it needs to be forgiven. I mean, and who knows what would have happened to have happened to a person to turn into that kind of adult. What kind of pain must they have had to endure? Let alone, I'm sure there's gotta be mind altering drugs involved. How could there not be? You know, I just have to give it all over to God and I'm just going to practice trying to forgive somebody <laughs> that slighted me from four years ago, you know? And as my mind heals, I'm, I'm hoping my light shines brighter and brighter and it will somehow affect all the other things. And, and Nancy Gale, I feel for you. I, whenever a tree falls down, it hurts my heart a lot, let alone having damage on your roof. And, and I just love what Mickey Singer says is that, can we just honor, respect, and appreciate the moment now, right now, you are not going through chemotherapy right now. You're sitting in a chair talking to your friends right now. You have a roof over your head. I just love trying to stay steep in that present moment just brings me so much relief just so much relief right now right now is all we have and and I don't want to miss a moment of my life if it's smelling something horrendous I mean Kathleen you're the only person in Florida that got to experience that particular smell at that particular time you're the only person you know how many things had to happen in the universe for that to happen it's amazing I'm not saying it's pleasant but it's amazing amazing it's amazing love you all uh, thank you leslie oh my god every time you share it's like i can just feel it all i feel it all thank you grace hi very quickly because i've already had my turn but talking about this subject just reminds me of dr hugh lynn and his work in that um, institution for the criminally insane, right? Now, if he did that without even seeing those guys, we can do it. Look how many there are of us. We can do it without knowing anything about it. Thanks all for sharing about that subject as well. Yes, great reminder, Grace. And I know Kathleen said she was busy doing whole pona pona on it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do if it enters my mind. That's all yeah. I can do. And he, he's a great example. I mean, wow, you're right. He didn't know anything about anybody. Mm -hmm. Yay. Way to go, you guys. Yeah, we got this. We got this. Yeah, and I know, like... Is it real? Is it not real? Well, you know what? None of this is real. None of this is real. None of it. You know, the, the criminally insane people that Dr. Hewlin did his work around that he didn't even open their files, let alone see them, and they healed. 
none of that is real either. The my great great grandfather who was in prison for molesting his 10 year old daughter, that wasn't real either. But it does give me an opportunity to figure out a way that I can have compassion for somebody like that. Because like we were saying, what has had to happen to those people to make them do something so horrific. And so I can have compassion when I'm thinking about it in that way. And none of it is real. None of it is real. Only love is real. Only love is real. Yes, Linda, and that whole thing is a call for love. Absolutely. Let's give them love. Yes. And yes. what good practice for us to not judge. We don't know what anything is for. Right? We know nothing. We, know, we don't know what their soul contracts were. I mean, yes, we can still have love and compassion and, and do our forgiveness work. But the bottom line is, is not that we shouldn't judge, as right. Jesus says, but that we cannot judge. We don't yes. know nothing. We know nothing, nothing. I mean, perfect, cute little example, and then I'll be quiet too. Just my mom and I were convinced that that my mom's great grandson Grayson was going to have a mouth full of cavities. I mean, he had used suckers all the time. He drank pop. You know, it's like they're not brushing his teeth good. It's like, oh my god, he didn't go to the dentist. He was four years old. I'm like, oh god, he's and my mom's a dental hygienist, so she was like really freaked out. Well, so we're judge, 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 judge. He goes to the dentist zero cavities zero <laughs> so now whenever we want to judge something we look at each other and say no cavities <laughs> that's our like little secret code now no cavities we don't know anything i don't know how take that, that leslie take that leslie <laughs> exactly take that oh <laughs> unbelievable i was so grateful and so shocked and so humbled and so embarrassed <laughs> you know all of it <sighs> well, that's what it says. Prayer is a way to true humility. <laughs> yeah. Nancy Gale. And then Robin. I love you, Leslie. It's like, oh my goodness. Um, what is the truth? I have never listened to for some reason, whatever. Um I ended up on um who is it? As, uh, connected to, to um, an interview or something with uh, or something with um, with um, Cindy Laura, Cindy oh, Laura Renard, yeah. yesterday, and I said, "Oh my gosh!" And it was like, "Oh whoa!" Her newest, her book, not this newest one, but the one before it, what's called "Heaven Is Now." And she went through all these things and it's, you know, how each person or each teacher or whatever has a different little tiny, even if their perspective is one degree different from the prevailing one or whatever, it still adds a different, a, di a little different flavor. And so, so I learned something, I had her perspective on different things and I said, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I could be in the visual of this. She's, she's like that visual person. But anyways, so that was on. And um, the other thing was, uh, let's, what did you just say? Um, <clears throat> oh, we're talking about Hugh Lin. He didn't ever, yeah, he did not look at anybody's, uh, you know, he didn't know any, uh, you know, what, all the information that you can look at. At a person, when at a patient or something, um, I did the same thing when I was doing the chaplaincy thing. I had access to everybody's like uh, you know charts and stuff like that. I chose not to look at any of. Them. I never looked at any of them. I didn't know anything about the person, except what they told me. So yeah. I went in on we're a, we're a level here. I only know what you want to tell me or might have a little piece or something. And they don't know me. And it's like, I was the, I'm, I'm bragging, but I was the star of that whole thing. But I, you know, everybody in the hospital, doctors, nurses, staff, um, anyone. And I had people telling me, um, so I, uh, my point was, Hugh Lin was himself. He, you know, he walked the halls or whatever he did, his presence. Yeah. Who he was from the. That's what was went in there. 
And so by not knowing anything, he couldn't form an opinion. He couldn't make a judge, therefore making a judgment, et cetera, because he didn't have any of those. I can't hope they can get what I'm trying to say. I had the same experience because I went me who I was then, which is basically the same. Mm -hmm. um, went into a room, just that's it. And being that, it's like I didn't have anything. I didn't couldn't make judgments. It's like and even back then, that was 20 years ago. And um, I had people telling me, coming to me and telling me. You know, even if their pastor had been in before, you, it's like, don't tell our pastor. It's like, don't tell me. <laughs> I was the one to help them. Yeah, because and you were able to hold when the she right said, side huh? for them. What? Because you, you, because you didn't know anything about their past, you were just able to go there with the intention of knowing their Christedness. Right. And. That wasn't my job wasn't my job, my the pastor person was uh he said your job is to listen. He says you pray and you listen. He said, You don't have to say anything, you know, you're not going there to proselytize. Uh, no, that's another whole story about somebody else that anyways, um, but that's like and I'm just looking when she said that, I was like, Oh, that's what I did. Yeah, that's exactly. what I was. And that's what we're gonna do with all of the situations that we're dealing with right now in our own personal lives and with the situation that was in that movie that Kathleen saw. That's what we're Well, see, I don't even know any, there's a lot of stuff I don't, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing I did last week. Yep, we're just gonna hold the crisis. And I'm gonna tell the Holy Spirit, mm, I want the same thing. <laughs> I want the same outcome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Thank this was beautiful. You. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> Thank I'm done. Go ahead, Robin. Do it. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy Gale. Um, and thanks, everybody. Um, I just have like a word or two phrases that come and they really shift and are helpful to me. And when we think of all of these horrendous, um, what seem to be real, uh, it's so easily to be heartbroken and stay kind of uh, in a place where you're paralyzed. And so just, um, I just wanted to share that um, someone, uh, maybe it was Kathleen or, or Leslie, it doesn't matter. Um, it does matter because they matter, but <laughs> trying to get, talking about violence. Uh, I just remember, I can't remember the whole sentence, but there it was in the course. It says, stop lamenting the world. Stop thinking that you're pure. You have to get your own violence that is within you taken care of. And I was like, me? And I'm not violent. And then it's like, oh, <laughs> So there's that I wanted to share. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share is in any moment, what is presenting itself to us is on purpose. And if I, if I get stuck in something like I'm not liking, I'm like, wait a minute, if I can bring myself back, this moment is on purpose to help you heal and get rid of this. Uh, and it seems so, um, I don't know, when I, when I am feeling upset and I bring that phrase up, this is on purpose. So how can I look at it and treat it differently? And it usually with a breath or two, you know, and calming down, you don't have to be spending your, your minutes uh, being uncomfortable and, and really just off the path. Um, so with that, and someone was bringing it up today, yesterday or the other day, I had this insight. Well, this insight is so repetitive, but it was like, oh, and it was like, if I am unhappy in the world, I am living that unhappiness in the world in this moment. 
So if I can change my mind to, if I am living in happiness in the world, guess what? I'm living in happiness. Uh, so, you know, when you get your insights and you try to share them to others, it kind of gets flat. But anyway, I'm doing the best I can here. The last thing that is really beautiful, I think, is the word simplicity. And I have grown up with that word as an adult through Quakerism. And we have, you know, spiritual qualities. And one of them is simplicity. And that's always been my favorite simplicity in form and simplicity in the realm of the invisible and um here somewhere along um recently i mean within the week or two weeks the word simplicity came up whether i was reading it or somebody was sharing it and they said when you stop being in simplicity you have separated yourself from God. And it was like a deeper level of understanding this precious word in my vocabulary and in my life. So those are the things that I want to share with you guys. And thank you so much. Oh, Thanks so God. much goodness in that share. Thank you so much, Robin. Um, yeah. Simplicity. I'm going to go forward the rest of this day and the rest of this next week with simplicity at the fore of my mind. I appreciate that. Wow. Well, next week. Um, oh, and I did want to acknowledge um, Colette had to leave because she's um, she's a doula for a woman who uh, they are getting ready to induce labor uh, using some energy medicine. So we're just going to hold her in our mind as well um, while we uh, complete our call today. Um, so next week we will uh, dive into chapter two, forgiveness. We will do the um, introduction and the first section, forgiveness of yourself. How about that? In my book, it's on pages nine and 10 but I have this skinny little thing, so. And how lovely that our Pathways of Light website decided to come live again today <laughs> so that I can read the insights for today's lesson, lesson number 199. I am not a body, I am free. And oy, 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 that's a, <laughs> I have to learn that one over and over again. Okay. The more I work with the course, the more I realize how much of my time is focused on the body and its seeming needs. I see that in the ego's hands, the body is a powerful distraction to divert my attention from focusing on what will truly bring me peace and happiness. The more I practice letting the Holy Spirit guide me through my day, the more I recognize the things I thought I needed to make me happy or comfortable or safe are really unnecessary. As I place my trust more and more in the Holy Spirit and in God's love, I feel less and less need for outer forms. I still need to eat. I still need to have clothes to keep me warm in cold weather. I still think I need a house to shelter me from the weather. But the form these things take is less and less important. I am more free in each moment to receive the blessing of the moment without judgment. There is a growing trust in my heart that I always have what I need when I need it. I always know what I need to know when I need to know it. Life becomes increasingly simple. <laughs> There's that word. And more of my time is focused on following Holy Spirit's lead. Practicing remembering. I am not a body, I am free, helps reinforce this focus, leading me onward toward greater and greater freedom. I will continue this practice today, for I know true and lasting happiness lies in it. I am grateful for this message from the voice for God today. In paragraph six of this lesson, it says, the Holy Spirit is the home of minds that seek for freedom. 
Notice it doesn't say bodies or individuals or persons. It says minds. This reinforces the fact that I am not an individual person. I am mind. I am thought. I am an idea in the mind of God. In paragraph one, it says the mind can be made free when it no longer sees itself as in a body firmly tied to it and sheltered by its presence. This means that the sleeping son of God, which is really mind, can be made free as it mind no longer sees itself mind as in a body. It is being reinforced in this lesson that all the separate bodies found in this dream of separation are all really the same mind, all joined as one mind. We are learning we are not tied to the body or made safe by its continuing presence in the dream. We are formless mind unbound by the laws, false ideas, the ego, belief in separation made up. The way we free ourselves from, from belief that we are tied to a body is to open our minds to the Holy Spirit to hear the truth about our real identity. As we are ready to open to the truth, the Holy Spirit shows us that the body is illusion, just made up, fabrication, a dream. Under the Holy Spirit's guidance, we can use the body as a useful tool a vehicle used only for God's plan of awakening from the dream. I agree with the above about being about beginning to recognize the things that are unnecessary in my life. Naturally, because a part of me still believes I am a body, I still need to eat, stay warm, etc. But since I have started the course, my priorities have changed. And I think those unnecessary things that I'm beginning to recognize are the barriers the Course speaks of, those things that keep me from knowing the truth about myself and my brothers. These barriers are the ego's way of attempting to distract me and keep me focused on things the body seems to need. And because those things change from day to day or are in constant need of being replaced, repaired or whatever, my state of mind varies from day to day, depending on my seeming needs. I try to think of the Holy Spirit sort of like a child would think of an imaginary friend. He goes where I go, and I try to remember to ask his opinion about any decision I need to make or tell him my deepest, darkest secrets so he can see what I see and correct my distorted perception. I realize I've only just begun the healing process, but it sure does feel good. Isn't that cool that that, that reading included simple and freedom? And we were talking about both of those things today. Thank you so much, everybody. I love and appreciate you so much. Same here. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Bye. Have a beautiful week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Love you all. Love you.